Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 17 of The Soul Forge podcast. I'm your host, Sean Vanderloo. I'm very grateful that you decided to stop by today. And speaking of gratitude and being grateful for things, That is today's topic. I thought that with the Canadian Thanksgiving coming up on this uh, coming Monday, what are we thankful for? Are we thankful? Let's talk about it. So we've got gratitude and gratefulness and thankfulness and all these kind of things. And as you know from previous episodes, I don't really like to spout and read a lot of research to you guys about any of the topics that come up. The Soul Forge is about personal experience, but I thought when it comes to gratitude, I would do a little bit of research just to see what the experts have to say. And I'm, and I'm not going to get into it too deeply. If, if you want to uh, find any article on it or whatnot, there's all kinds of Google stuff. I did find that there, apparently there is a world-leading scientific expert on gratitude. Who knew? His name is Robert Emmons, and he identified two key components towards gratitude. Uh, The first one is that gratitude is an affirmation of goodness in the world. And the second is that this source of goodness is outside of ourselves. And what does all that mean? It basically means that we express gratefulness to also acknowledge that there is something good in the universe. Because we've been given many gifts to help us achieve the goodness in our lives, we're going to express our gratefulness or our gratitude because of it. And that's what Robert Emmons came up with. And there was a bunch more, but I'm not going to get into it because it's a lot of scientific jargon and gobbledygook, and we don't do that here on the Soul Forge podcast. These episodes are overviews of topics, and if you want to learn more, there's way more to learn. But I just want to give my perspective on gratitude. In my research, I found that expressing gratitude is actually a relationship-strengthening emotion. It's the moral memory of mankind. It's what binds society together and makes sure that it doesn't fall into chaos and that kind of thing. And surprisingly, the study of gratitude within psychology has only been around since the year 2000. Because, for the most part, uh, humanity focuses on negative emotions. And in my research, such as it was, it takes three positive emotions to counter-effect the reaction to one negative emotion. So we're hardwired for negativity. How about me enjoying the moment for once? How about how good it feels to finally forgive you? But gratefulness can boost our health. So that's all the research that I've done. Now I want to get into a little bit. What does all this mean? Why? Why are we thankful? What are we thankful for? Well, we can be thankful for anything. Almost everything is something to be thankful for. But it wasn't always easy for me as a child to express these these emotions. And, and I guess what that's what uh, please and thank you and you're welcome actually is. It's a signifier of emotion. Now, my mom, she raised us kids up very well. She always uh, is indoctrinated, the right word, drilled it into our heads. I, I don't know what the right terminology is, but she always made sure that we used our manners. We did our pleases and our thank yous and our excuse me's and our pardons and all that stuff. So the good news is I had a, a solid foundation, a basis for being a grateful person, being well-mannered and that kind of thing. But the stepdad that I had, nicknamed Cannon, which I have talked about in previous episodes, he was not a very kind person, I guess is the best way to put it. Rude, maybe. He uh, he rarely, I don't know if I ever heard any please or thank you from him. It was always more of an order kind of thing. Go get me my cigarettes. Pick up this mess that I made before your mom gets home. And he would just sit there and order about. So uh, there was no please, no thank you. I don't think there was ever a you're welcome when we said it. So 
it kind of became a thing where uh, to to get back at his rudeness, I became rude myself, and I stopped using my manners, and much to the chagrin of my mom, of course. As time went on, my manners slowly disappeared. But why? Why would I do that just to get back at him? Because really, it wasn't hurting him. He didn't care. It was, it was just making me seem like a bad person. Thinking about it, I, I think I stopped saying please very much because if you just say the word slowly and you look at it, it seems like begging. Please! You know, and, and that's, that's a vulnerability. So expressing manners is kind of a vulnerability in a, in a certain sense because you're asking for things and the other person has the power to say no. And that's not a good position to be in. Does this make any sense logically? Probably not. Because thinking back on it for this episode, I was like, you know what? Why? Why was I like that? It doesn't make any sense. Just because one person was rude and didn't use any manners, I should have gone the other way and used my manners more to be an example. But I was a kid. What did I know? That reminds me of, uh, remember about 20 years ago, Alanis Morissette came out with the song Thank You? Thank you, India. Thank you, Terror, and all that stuff. And it was a good song, and I liked it. And I don't think I really grasped it 20 years ago. Like, I I got what she was saying, but I just watched the video just before recording the podcast to refresh my memory, because I hadn't seen the video in years and heard the song in quite a while. And in that video, people are going about their lives, doing their things, and she's either standing or sitting naked. Everything's blurred out, and her hair's covering her boobs and whatnot. But she's totally exposed to the world. And that's what it is, exactly. That's what gratitude is. That's what these emotions are. You're expressing your naked self. This is me. I'm on display. Here I am. Thank you. And she she thanks all kinds of different things. And and that's one of the things that I read about. You you thank you can thank a person, you can thank a higher power, you can thank the universe, you can thank fate, you can thank anything. You you can thank the experiences that you've gone through for teaching you whatever lesson that you've learned. And I would recommend actually going to YouTube and looking up Thank You by Alanis Morissette. Just watch the video, listen to the words. Maybe you haven't ever heard the song or you haven't heard it in 20 years like I haven't. I think you're, you'll get a whole new appreciation for it. But back to my experiences. The last bunch of years, I, I've tried to up the emotional quotient in my life. Thank everybody for everything. Hey, you know what? Thanks for that. But I try to say thank you because thanks is kind of like a meh, thanks, whatever. So... Thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Please. Can I please have a glass of water? Or, or whatever you're, you're asking for, that kind of thing. Now, I deliver the mail, and I go to a lot of businesses, and, and the secretaries always say, hey, thanks for that, or thank you, have a great day. And I don't tend to say, you're welcome. I tend to say, welcome, because why do I do that? I, I think because they know I'm talking to them, and it is, it is them. You're welcome. So, welcome. And it's just quick and easy, and I'm in a rush, and I'm usually out of breath because I'm hurrying along my route to get it done. But I say the words. When I need to get a signature from somebody, I'll say, hey, uh, can I have your signature for this, please? And they're like, sure, here you go. I was like, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. So very little uh, light pleasantries, but it makes the day go by. It makes your world go round. It, uh, it, like uh, the research said, it strengthens the bonds. It tells the other person that you're grateful for their service, or they're grateful for yours, or whatever. And uh, a lot of these businesses actually have candy on the desk. When I first started on this route, there would be candy there. I'm like, oh, that looks great. They'll be like, uh, oh, you want that? I'm like, yeah, well, take one every day. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Uh, no, you're, you're welcome. So lots of chocolate on my route. So am I, am I losing weight? I'm not really losing weight because I'm eating chocolate. I'm walking, but I don't know if the, the walking is counteracting the chocolate. But I'm grateful for the chocolate because it's Lindor and it's fantastic. But that's a side note. If you are loving this podcast, you're loving this podcast, you should tell a friend about it. Spread the word about podcasts you think they would enjoy. There's something for everyone from entertainment and lifestyle to news and politics and more. Share it on social media. Believe it or not, some people don't know how great podcasts are or even how to find and listen to them. You can help change that with a click. Tell your friends about your favorite podcast. Thanks for spreading the word. So let's get uh, back to individual experiences that I've had. My son, he's 11 years old, and I try to get him to do manners and and whatnot. And so does his mom. And he's pretty good at it, but sometimes he forgets, and uh, we have to remind him. 
like I, I took him for uh, for a haircut the other day and uh, paid for it, and we went went off and did whatever we did. I'm like, do you like your haircut? He's like, yeah, it's not bad. And I was like, well, you're welcome. And he's like, oh, right, thank you. He forgets. And he's a kid, so I guess that makes sense. But you have to remind them so that they don't forget. So I was thinking a little bit more about this whole uh, mental health journey and positive well-being and stuff that I'm on. And in these articles that I've been reading, there's a lot of different advice about gratitude and who are you interacting with and, and that kind of thing. And, and they say the best way to practice gratitude is to establish a daily routine or create a thankfulness reminder on your phone or computer to pop up every day to prompt you. Now, is that something that you want to do? I don't know. It depends. Are you grateful anyway? Are you, do you express gratitude? Do you send thank you notes? I don't know. I I don't know that I, I, I send thank you notes uh, for gifts for my uh, for my wedding. Uh, I don't think I've ever sent a thank you note for anything else. I may have, but it's been a while if it, if it has happened at all. If you guys wouldn't mind, I'd just like to write out my weekly thank you notes right now. Is that cool with you guys? Is that all right? <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. James, can I get some thank you note writing music, please? Wow. He's already started meditating. Thank you, Jon Snow and the Hound, for being what you see on Tinder versus who actually shows up. Well, then, ah. That's exactly right. Swipe up. How you doing, man? I think he's winking at me. Thank you, yawns, for being short, silent, operized. Yeah, fantastic. That was great. Rudy from Sesame Street, everybody. Further in the article here that I found, all kinds of su suggested activities and exercises can be undertaken without human contact. And that's something that's not too bad, because human contact can be icky, right? But uh, thank someone mentally. Create a gratitude journal. Count your blessings. Meditate. And for those who are so inclined, pray. You can achieve the recommended levels of gratitude without spending a penny or uttering a word. All you have to do is generate within yourself the good feelings associated with gratitude and then bask in its warm, comforting glow. If there is any loving involved in this, it is self-love, and the current hoopla around gratitude is a celebration. I, I don't really like reading these articles. It, it talks a lot about self-help and all that kind of good stuff. And I don't think it's necessary that you have to be involved in the whole self-help thing. Just do what feels good for you. If, if it feels good to thank someone, do it. If, it, if you want to send a thank you note to someone and that makes you feel good, do it. You, you, could, you could write a gratitude journal. You could tweet it. I, today I thank the universe for gas in my car. You know, it could be anything. Getting back to the whole idea of Thanksgiving, it's, it's pretty much a holiday dedicated to being grateful for things. Now, I've been through a lot of different Thanksgiving dinners around different tables, different families, different things. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Some people say grace first, and that's thanking the higher power, the great maker, God, this the spirit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some people thank the farmers. Some people don't do anything, and they just chow down and dig right in. My son's family, like his his mom and and her parents, they would and they still do. They go around the table, and each person says what they're thankful for. Now, I'd never experienced that until the year two thousand and three, when Trish and I got together, and we got together right around Thanksgiving. So. Hey, welcome to the family. Here's my mom and dad. Uh, here's dinner. And now what we're going to do is say what we're thankful for. So that was quite an experience. And I think I was near the end. And I would listen to everybody and what they said. And how did I meet Trish? Well, if you remember back in 2003, for three or four days, there was the great big power outage that uh, took out half of North America. And Trish and I worked at a call center, and we were on the same team. But uh, I, I pretty much kept to myself back then. I was new in town. I'd only been here for six months and didn't really know too many people yet. And so I didn't say much. But then uh, the power outage occurred, and uh, our systems went down. But we had to stay at work in, in case they came back up. And so we just all sat around chatting. Trish asked me what my story was, and I guess it all came tumbling out. And then we got to know each other. That was, what, that was August. So then we got to know each other. And uh, by October, we were together, and a week later it was Thanksgiving, and I had to say what I was thankful for, so I thanked the power outage for helping me find Trish. So that, that was a good answer, I thought. And that's uh, 2003 power outage, the, the start of my adult life. It, it could be, because, I don't know, there's, there's lots to talk about in regards to that, but that's a whole other episode of the Soul Forge. This is about gratitude, so I was thankful for 
the power outage and for meeting Trish and then I had Bishop years later and all that good stuff. So that was something to be thankful for. What are you thankful for? What are you going to thank people for at Thanksgiving? That's what I'd like to know. This is Kitty from Jump City Comics and you're listening to the Soul Forge podcast. Forge your soul. There's lots more we could talk about being grateful, but for now, just a quick overview. And I want to thank all of you for coming by, listening to the episode. If you're telling your friends about the Soul Forge podcast, that is fantastic, and I thank you for that. I would like to hear from you, though. What are you thankful for this year? I'll read your answers on the next episode. You can email me at soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Tell me what you're grateful for. What are you thankful for? Or what are you not thankful for? What are you thankful that didn't happen? Because you can be thankful for things that happened, and you can be thankful for things that didn't happen. There's no right way to be thankful. So that's all I've got for you guys this week. Hope you uh, learned a little bit more about gratitude. If you'd like more information, email me. We could talk about it. We could we could have a tweet conversation, Soul Forge Pod on Twitter. Join the Facebook group. That's always an option. We can have a little bit of discussion on there. Uh, do you want my episodes to be longer? Do you want me to do more research? Do you want me to get more involved in all the nitty gritty of whatever topic I'm discussing? Or are these 15 to 25 minute episodes good? That's what I need to know. On episode 16, I talked about your feedback matters, and I didn't receive any emails or any kind of indication that uh, people were listening. I know they are because I see the download numbers, and they say that only maybe 1% of your audience will ever contact you, so I understand that. Be that 1%. Let's get some good feedback and interaction going. That's, that's what I'd appreciate. But I'm grateful that you listen, and even if you don't send any email or, or whatnot, that's fine. You don't have to. That's not what this is about. It's, it would just be uh, a little bit more pleasant for me so that I can give you that much more. But anyway, that's a different story. Thanks for coming by, and I hope you got some value out of today's episode. And remember, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Soul Forge. I hope you found some value in it. To contact the show, please email soulforgepodcast at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at soulforgepod. We are Soul Forge Podcast on Facebook and you can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Please spread the Soul Forge word by rating and reviewing us in iTunes and by telling everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by The Forge! <laughs>